cut it. Oh, I got it. Crochet and cut. Oh, and then you see the you have the yeah. crochet. Yeah, but not yet. Just change. Okay. It's fine. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. It is now time for the uh, joint session of the Reliable Available Wireless and the DetNet Working Groups. And um, you're at IETF 117, and we've got Janos, um, co-chair of DetNet Online, and we've got Lou Berger, the other co-chair here next to me, and uh, Rick and Eve from um, the RAW Working Group. And, um, and we have quite a few people online, so thank you for being here, particularly for those of you in um, time zones that this is not the most ideal um, time of day for you. So thank you for being here. It is Thursday, and you may have seen the note well before, but for those of you who may not have seen it, I will quickly remind you that there are processes uh, that we observe, both about internet stand standards making, as well as working group processes. And in particular, we're very, we take very seriously, um, <laughs> we take very seriously the anti-harassment procedures and the code of conduct. Uh, and we also remind you that we, um, there is, there's patent information that we like to solicit from authors uh, regularly uh, to make sure that we are um, aware of any existing, pre-existing um, patented content and ideas. Um, as I stated before, some of the things that we'd like you to note very well are uh, issues around conduct, uh, particularly to be respectful and courteous to those around you um, and that discussions are not meant to be personal affronts, rather we're meant to have a dialogue about the technical content and that we're trying to devise solutions uh, for the global internet uh, that meet the needs of diverse technical and operational environments and um, that you all are prepared to contribute to the ongoing work of these groups. We hope that you are going to, would you like to join us up here? <laughs> um, Ethan sadly had a, um, he was rushing here and a, a, a mishap. A mishap. <laughs> but uh, not until the Uber driver who doesn't speak English, doesn't speak English had, a little, English, had a little bit of a mishap. Ethan um, has, of course, for as many of you know who've been attending DentNet, has been an incredible um, secretary for the working group, and we want to acknowledge that. Okay, uh, tips for those of you who are in person. Uh, if you, would you please um, use the on-site tool to make sure that we capture your uh, participation. You can use the QR code or you can um, click on the little icon in the agenda uh, webpage. And uh, please uh, also when you're queuing up to use that tool. And for remote participants, uh, please also uh, use the tool to queue up and uh, mute your mic and video. You are here, you have found your way here. Thank you very much. Um, uh, please join uh, us in note taking. Um, Ethan will be leading the charge, but your insights and help uh, are always uh, welcome and encouraged. The, uh, here's all the information for then the URLs for joining uh, the chat as well, but that's now all integrated into the Meet Echo tool. And it is important to scan in. We've been asked to emphasize that there may be a, uh, a scan version of the blue sheet even going around to make you, if you feel like you miss uh, signing in in pen, at least you can scan in um, and bring in the tool. Uh, thank you. If you missed the session on Wednesday, uh, DetNet was held earlier uh, yesterday, and uh, you can find the recordings online. And you're at the second session for DetNet. And oh, actually, the third session. Um, did well, you have another joint meeting? Up. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, where are we? We are at. Uh, so, what does the agenda look like? <laughs> I'll, I'll take over. So, the agenda for this session is uh, as this is a joint session with RAW, there are a couple of RAW topics on here. And uh, then a couple of uh, 
DeckNet topics as well, which have, have overspilled into this, which is great. So as part of the, uh, as was advertised in previous raw meetings, uh, the raw working group is merging back into DeckNet. I'm hoping that is not unfamiliar to people in this room and people uh, taking part. Um, so in a, in a sort of in debt net terms, this is our one plus one merge point where we go back into a, into a single debt net working group, um, bad jokes aside. So one of the open questions is the status of the documents that are still resident within raw. So of those documents, um, there is one critical one that is still very much open for debate and has already been circulated on the DeckNet group, which is the overall architecture document. Of the remaining documents in the rural working group, they are either proceeding through IESG review and onwards, or have actually been published. So as was on the last slide. Can, yes. can, I, can I go back, sorry? Yeah, you're a little bit, you should be just thinking about the slides. So this is the agenda. I think the document slide is... Oh, have I jumped ahead? You Sorry. jumped ahead. It's okay, we can jump to it. Yeah, here, we'll just okay. jump ahead. Here you yeah. go. Sorry, here we go. So we've jumped ahead to the slides. Um, so the use cases is with the IESG. The architecture document is post last call. And so we had some great reviews from the debt, larger DebtNet community outside of RAW, which was uh, one of the reasons for cross-posting to that list. And uh, we will be covering that in some detail during this session. The technologies draft is nearing completion, but we'll move across into DebtNet. OAM support, again, was originally split out of a, a DebtNet document to draw out the raw features. That's now really being finished off within the working group. And the framework document was a mechanism we were using within the raw working group to capture thoughts as we went along with the intention of being the final piece of work from raw. We're going to hand that to the DebtNet chairs, really, to uh, to do with as they see fit, either roll it into some other document or keep it rolling or quietly obsolete it. Um, so if you have a strong opinion about that, I, I suggest taking it to the list. The industrial requirements document has sat expired for some time. We have The chairs of RAW have reached out to the authors on the document to say, do they still have cycles to work on it? We didn't hear anything. Did um, they were welcome. They welcomed the idea <laughs> of additional co-authors joining that to get it across the finish line. And um, I, we did have at the last meeting a couple of people volunteer. So I think uh, really the issue is whether we should circle back. We should make that an AR before the handoff uh, to see if those individuals are still interested. And if the so the, oh, it, 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 the handoff of it will be really easy if they submit with the new name DebtNet Raw, <laughs> then we will accept it and we Excellent. will move forward with it. If they choose not to, it, it right. they've chosen not to. Uh, go ahead, Carlos, because I was just about to mention your four individual drafts. Uh, Carlos, no, I was about to say that uh, I, I think I volunteer, I don't remember, for yes. the industrial requirement in case they want to help and the working group want to keep that, I, I can help. So again, if you resubmit just ITF, that draft ITF, DebtNet raw, put it in the submission request, we'll approve it. But uh, yeah, I can do it, but I, I would like to, to know if the, the other co-authors are fine with that, just not yeah. just submitting so, by myself. Uh, so the interesting thing is once it becomes a working group document, it's owned by the working group. And while it's polite to ask them, it's actually the chairs they, that appoint editors, not the authors. So if you want to take on, certainly, you know, be polite, send them a message. If they don't respond, just update it and please, you know, proceed. And um, both myself and Ruta, uh, Sophia, w were um, interested. Oh, no, she was the original. She's one of the original. original but it was um, our friends who, there was another person who um, identified themselves as interested in updating this and getting it across the line. So we should convene afterwards and politely... Okay. Co uh, coordinate amongst uh, existing co-authors and new co-authors. Okay. So uh, talking about Carlos's four documents that are all individual drafts in RAW, the conversation that, that the chairs have had with Carlos, you're quite happy to bring those across into DebtNet or let them rest as you see fit. So there's no problem with that at the moment. Yeah, there are a couple of them at least that I would like to have some discussion. So I would resubmit and, and try, try to 
good question feedback on the mailing list and potentially discussing prep. That's great. Perfect. All right, um, let's, shall we go back? Yeah, let's go back because I jumped far ahead on that, that, that item there. Okay, so I think we So I think I kind of covered that one. Um, so, Lou, take over because this is much more definite. Okay. We really coordinated this so everyone would get to speak. It's very nice. <laughs> Um, not at all. So uh, we are not going to have any uh, change in DetNet chairs. Uh, Janos is still here. Uh, he'll throw his video on in a second just to say hello. Um, and, but we are going to have a change in. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we are going to change out our uh, working group secretary. Um, the, there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, Ethan has been doing this for a long time, and he said, enough. <laughs> <laughs> we coaxed him to make this his final meeting, and so we really appreciate um, the uh, contribution you've made uh, in DebtNet through the years, both as and author- And the standard, the high standard right, of The author, as an editor, and as supporting the working group process. Uh, really very much appreciate it. Thank you. I know uh, Janos is disappointed to not be able to be here in person to thank you, but we, we truly appreciate it. So uh, thank you, and I think it's appropriate. That we hold this. Well, thank you very much. It's really been a pleasure. Uh, and uh, it's been since the very beginnings of, of DebtNet Work Group and since its, you know, its origins in, uh, in the uh, TSN you know, world. So I'm, I'm uh, Retiring from my engineering career, it's nothing personal. I'm pretty much <laughs> going off to do music stuff, and life is good, and I wish you all well, and I look forward to seeing DebtNet in some actual products. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and um, from, uh, we discussed who would be, uh, who would be an uh, appropriate replacement, and thankfully Eve volunteered, or agreed to be <laughs> volunteered. Um, and uh, she's going to um, help ensure that we have good continuity from the work that was happening in RAW and for it to continue in DebtNet. Uh, and she will also continue to shepherd the document that is under um, Working Group Last Call. Um, so she's going to continue to be active in the management of the group, even though we're losing the RAW uh, name. It's a nice RAW subgroup. So uh, thank you, Eve. You're welcome. All right, next slide, please. So we spent some time, um, the four chairs, as well as our AD, John, spent some time um, to, to looking at the debt net charter and said, what makes sense to change? We have a proposal. The, from a formality standpoint, it's actually completely up to John what we do. And then uh, in terms of what's brought forward to the IESG, and then it's up to the ISG to approve it. So we can comment, we can make suggestions. John gets the veto, and then the, uh, we go through the approval process. So the expectation is that this is going to, the, the actual changes are going to be done um, after this meeting and at the speed of the IESG approval process. And, you know, so if we're lucky by the next meeting, the, the update will happen. Um, you know, summer's here, things slow down a little bit. Um, the changes we identified were actually surprisingly small. The first is uh, in the intro part of uh, the, sec the, the charter, we didn't think it was actually necessary to make any changes, but we thought it was also good to be explicit, to say that what was done in RAW is being done here. So one sentence is being proposed to be added. Um, if anyone has any comments, they're welcome to make it as we go. Uh, seeing none, next slide, please. The next part is in the work area of the charter. Um, so the charter's broken down into some general description, then there's work areas. And what we wanted to do here was to um, lift text as much as possible from the raw charter. So some of the wording here may seem, I don't know, uh, different than you might want uh, or different than you might expect, but it's here for the reason that it was in the raw charter. 
Um, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and read it, but um, uh, please be aware this is here. We will send it to the list. We'll ask for comments. If you don't see it from the list in time and you feel like making comments, just send comments. These are, of course, online. Um, thank you. So we've already done this one. Uh, finally, uh, we really want to acknowledge uh, half of this is, is from all four of us, <laughs> five of us, um, but not the last part. But we really want to acknowledge everyone who contributed to uh, the successes in RAW. Uh, there's, uh, a, there's one or more R, R, uh, RAW RFCs either published or about to be published. Um, there's good working group documents. We've already just reviewed them. There's individual do documents. Thank you, Carlos, and your co-authors. Um, people have been working hard. And uh, it's important to recognize that. And we're looking forward to taking that energy into uh, DebtNet and continuing the work. Just because we're only back in doesn't mean the work stops. Um, we just have maybe more people to try. Of course, even Rick, you, uh, you, know, you carried this uh, since its inception. And uh, <laughs> I don't remember if you both were both chairs, but you certainly were active in the BOF, and you've been active in bringing the technology along and shepherding and overseeing it. And um, we appreciate it. I think the working groups appreciate it. Certainly those who work in the working group appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Okay. Here comes John. I, I couldn't let that go by without saying thanks for saying all the things that needed to be said, Lou. And you know, I agree. I really have appreciated all the work that you folks have done and you've made it very easy for me to be an A B for these groups. So thank you. And thank you for your partnership. Okay. All yeah. right, so we're gonna move on now to the architecture document. Are you sharing, am I sharing? Yeah, why don't you share? I didn't say I have to figure out how to share. Oh. That's all right. I'm okay. <laughs> Pascal, I think you're going to have to shout next slide because the uh, the auto flicker just doesn't work. So uh, just as a heads up, I'm going to put 20 minutes there, even though you really have 22. So no, you can go over a little bit. But I'm going to put 20 there just to keep on track. Okay, that's easy. You, you put two minutes. <laughs> no, that's what's left over. <laughs> so since we have this slide on screen, I'm Pascal Tuber from Cisco. And this is a document which authors with a big S is me and Al, and Al mean a good number of people who are listed as contributors. Some of them appear to be surprised to be there, but they've been there for a while and they need to answer about the patents, right? The IPR rules, etc. Next slide, please. So um, first I prepared these slides a week ago. And you know, a week is a very, very long time um, mostly when there is the ITF, meaning that some of them are already obsolete. And I sneaked a last slide at the end of the slide where, which already corrects the number of things which are on the previous slides. So uh, all the slides, but the last cover the document as it's available right now on the repo. Um, the version 10, unless it's renamed draft .net, I don't know, you tell me. But uh, no, the, the plan is not to rename this document. We're okay. going to uh, take it forward. So at, least, at least right now it's not planned, but you know, we'll see whether it changes. Uh, any of the renamed documents, uh, we will fill in the replaced by field so that you have the history, whether it changes names or not. You know, it's not a, a, a major thing. We'll have good tr uh, traceability either way. Okay. So as a reminder, we had a architecture and framework document that we split. So now we have architecture, which we're working on, and framework, which we hold till we know what we do, or what we have done. So, so that one, I guess, you'll have to tell me what to do with it. Um, so uh, yes, there was a lot of help and uh, a lot of work uh, happening between uh, ITF 115 and now, uh, London and now. So, so in London, we made a number of decisions. I tried to apply my understanding of those decisions. Now it's just my understanding. So apparently, there was more to do. Um, and so the changes were mostly that we simplified the document by um, removing the text about Pareo, which seemed 
too complicated or too, too deep compared to the rest of the, the level of the document. Um, and then basically we kind of simplified. And th there were a number of clarifications, but they only have uh, 22 minutes. So let's, let's move on. Okay, next slide, please. So th the bottom line was, it's not that net or row. Row is a superset of that net. So the second thing is uh, we worked a lot on uh, terminology already in, in version nine, and there's a lot more in version 10 to come. Uh, I had some reviews in particular with Don Fadik and Dave. And um, so, so for instance, we clarified that um, we are building protection path. So, so the term protection path already is there. What is missing in a nine and that we have to clarify is a good reference for what a protection path is. Um, in the context of .NET and row. So if, if we have anything, hopefully in the .NET documentations, otherwise elsewhere, to, to point on to say what the protection path is. Now that's the term we're using. So what we still call in 09 the PSC is basically in charge of defining time after time and quite quickly, what is the new set of protection paths that we are using for the future packets. And when I'm saying future packets, it's because it's one of those commands by Dave that the way it was worded with next packet was not so clear that the PSC, still calling it PSC in 09, uh, is, is not in the forwarding plane. It's making decision for a, sh a short time, like the, the next, the packets to come, but it's not in the flow of the packet itself. It just writes something for the forwarder to see and the forwarder will apply the same logic to the next packets until the PSC comes back and, and decides otherwise. But uh, a big change here is now we are using protection path. Uh, that's done, we suggest, suggested to introduce the term of lane, and it might be that we retract it as fast as we injected it. Um, <clears throat> and then th there was this concept of the lane is kind of forward traffic, traffic that actually progresses between the source and the destination. Now, there is also, in all that graph of capabilities, some traffic which will not progress. It will just go like your car from the lane to the next. So, so if you have this lane image in mind, you can see your car changing lane, which does not really help going forward, but helps avoiding some issues. And when we define those protection paths, they may effectively go a longer lane for a while and then skip to the next lane and go back to the previous lane, etc. So that's to, to go around issues. Um, if we lose the concept of, of lane, we still have to, to kind of express that some hops are going forward and are unidirectional, and some hops are going orthogonally to the, to, to the direction and could be used in both directions. And that's, well, in general, by the graph. For one protection path, it's one direction or the other. Um, and we use, we, we fork that term north-south, but Lou uh, rightfully indicated that, yeah, we are overloading terminology, which means something very different. And effectively we are. So, so we need to find new terminology for cross lane and, and forward. So happy to, to get any recommendation on how to call those things. For protection path, we seem to have settled just to know if it's lowercase or uppercase and, and then I will be happy. I mean, what do you do? Right? I mean, I do the same. Okay. Next slide. Um, okay. So there was there was this this discussion of path versus track, and I think we uh, even after O9, uh, I'm sorry, even after 13, which is 13 is the last one, even after 13. I I think we are clear that there are two concepts. I mean, that was my understanding in London, and then more and more clear that it's the common understanding now. Um, an image of that is the book and the library, what, what, what the PC or whoever that is, because it goes away as well, uh, computes for row is like a set of possibilities which are expressed in whichever fashion, as a graph, as a, as a collection of paths, can be expressed in different fashion. The architecture is very abstract uh, on that. Um, now the collection itself is not a path. Example being, there are some hops there that can be bidirectional where in the actual protection path that the PSC will build for that, it will use those links in one direction or the other, but there won't be loops, right? So, so we wanted to avoid the confusion between the library and the books. 
And so you will see in the last slide that now we have a term for this, but we effectively made it clear that there is like the collection or the aggregation or the coalescence of all the possible paths. On the one hand, which we used to call track, now there will be a new term for it. And on the other hand, the protection paths that are built dynamically for the future packets. Next slide. Oh, by the way, part of the game is when you do a path, you're supposed to be able to track the, the path is, is a thing of the past. This packet has experienced this path. What we, what we see with this track is all the collection of all the possibilities for the future path, right? And it could even be that the packet is kind of uh, network coded, et cetera. So it won't really follow a path. Only a piece of it will follow a certain path and be aggregated with another piece. It's, it's a, so it's kind of, um, it's a, a lot more blurry what is the path and what is the experience of a packet because some bits of the packet may go in different places. Next slide. Okay, so now we're starting, I guess, getting into the discussions with Dave. So I should have um, mentioned him in this slide as well. So David came came uh, recently uh, on the work of Pascal to, to, to make his, his comments and, and there were a number of very good comments there. One of them is the draft was not crisp enough on what is OAM, meaning it's, it's circulating in the management layer and what is coming from the machine itself, like layer two trigger. So we had to clarify the, the, the basically the interfaces, right? The, the PSC, it was still the PSC in version 13. The PSC is talking directly with the system across some API, some interfaces for things like L2 trigger to get things like RSSI. But on the other hand, it's talking to OAM, or actually there is, there is a, a, an OAM responder component up there in the stack that the PSC talks to, to understand what's going on on the OAM side. So we kind of, we call it OAM supervisor and we can kind of clarify better if we can that these are different interfaces and different entities. Next slide. Oh, so <laughs> this is still quite open. So at least what, what Dave clarified is yeah, I mean, I thought it was clear, but it was not since we got this review commands. The PSC is not acting on each packet, thinking about what's going to happen for that packet. It writes something in the FIB or what, so that the next packet will benefit from it, from it right? So, so it's not, and it was hopefully quite kind of clear in the drawings, like you have some excerpt here. It's not forwarding plane. So in my mind, there was this big beast above, which was the controller plane with two components in it, like PCE and network management. It seems that I'm not 100% sure that's the model you guys have in mind. And it seems that there is, on the one hand, the management plane, and in, in the other, the controller plane. For me, both management and rod computation were part of the controller plane, because the controller is a box with, with all this in it, quote unquote. So, so I, I have to make sure we, we have the same model in mind because the comments I got from Greg at the discussion were like, PSC, which will be renamed, is management plane because it talks to AM and not controller plane. And I would say, yes, but it still gives me a path. <laughs> So, so if you can be talking to AM. And I think it would be helpful for the group to know, you know, the terms that we're moving towards that are aligned with the group, because there's a lot of new terms here. And I think I, people are trying to figure out how it relates to work we've done in the past, where if we start saying, here's the term we're actually going to end up using, it would be helpful. So for this, uh, for PSC, we've talked about using PLR, uh, point of local repair, which is a, a component in the protection architecture that some of you may know may know quite well and uh what's that so uh, right but but you're asking about comments from people about it and they don't know what you're saying well so, actually I, I i would have seen it the other way around people so far understand psc so i wanted to use psc because that's what they understand and then at the end of the meeting, tell them, okay, by the way, next time PSC won't be PSC. But if I'm using a term they've never heard today, they will still be wondering if that's the PSC. So I would have done it the other way around. I, 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 think, so, I think it's relevant given that this is raw and .NET. <clears throat> yes, I understand. For those who've been following raw forever, this is the PSC we're talking about. But for the .NET people, it's the PLR. 
we've we've managed to overload the name and come up with our own name for this, which is a mistake. It will go back to PLR. So for the rest of this, those of you who are familiar with PSE, it's still the PSE. Those of you with no idea what we're talking about, it's the PLR. And, and we're we going to end up Q. with one set of terms. It's going to be end. PLR. Just, this is a little bit of translation. You have David in queue. Do you want to take it now or later? Oh, please, now. Uh, David Black, please go ahead. Heavily either term. I wonder whether PLR is understating what the PSE is doing because there's a lot more than repair going on in that path selection. So let's table that and come yes, back less uh, until. Okay, I just, just that that's, that's a fun point. Table simply want, want, wanted to raise it here. Thank you, David. We will come back. And yes, and thank you for the point. Um, so based on your comments, uh, we already renamed the PC to make it a more generic term, and, and then it's still subject to change. So we mentioned, we called control, well, we already had in .NET and row the, the controller plane functions. And now since it's split, kind of, um, even inside the box, there is the piece which does the, the, the path computation, the protection path computation, which is PSC as we know it. And then there is still um, the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the global graph computation that the PC and then the PSC, which um, has a um, asynchronous operation that we call the ACPF now. Um, so, yes, we have to, to set out that terminology, but that's, that's what we have based on your review, basically that's how. That's how the draft set on in version 13. So we describe this as an asynchronous controller plane function. Now, if it's not controller plane, it has to be management plane. You have to tell me because this changes a bit. Next slide. Okay, so, so that's the famous slide that that's after I published 13, we came all here and we kind of met with Lou, Greg, uh, Adrian. And we started again talking about terminology. And I know it looks awful, but you need your terminology straight. You can't build anything, even less an architecture, if you don't have your terminology straight. So even if it looks like we're spending our time, it's well spent. Because having the word straight means we understand what you are manipulating. Um, so first of loose issue was, like I said, North-South. So north south being overloaded, we need to find another term for traffic going forward versus uh, hops which go, go across lanes. So I'm open to, to any term, but otherwise I will be using forward and, and across or something like that. Um, and then the discussion about track. Track appears in the world of MPLS, appears to be a new term. Is that useful to have a new term I think we settled that we, we have a different object, so we need a, a new term. And then is track a good term? I realized that my English was flowed, it was tracks, that's for the first thing, right? Uh, and then uh, we ended up proposing an alternative which is more in the spirit of the art of MPLS. Sorry for that for the wireless people because there is no label in, in wireless, for all I know. And we have this excellent reference which is 4427 which talks a lot about recovery. It doesn't have protection path, but it has all the words around recovery. And as it goes, what we call a track is kind of a set or a graph of all the possible paths that can be protection paths that can use and recovery meaning recomputing the protection path basically. So we, we kind of settled with a proposal to the group that I'm making now that the PSC following the art of uh, MPLS and, and this RFC would be effectively called the PLR, just like um, right, you guys said, both of you. So, so it's, it's PSC will become PLR. That's the first conclusion that we propose to this, this group. Track becomes recovery graph. So recovery graph does not exist in 4427. You've got recovery domain and we're going to reuse that term, right? We will insist that we reuse those terms. But trigger recovery graph, we will define as a new term in that family. Because that really means the library as opposed to the books. And Pareo stays, 
but it is described as a new recovery function. So basically it fits into these existing models of things. Okay, so the, so the current status is, we don't know what we do with lane, do we keep it or not? We have to rename north-south, and we have a proposal for PSE, track, and Pareo, calling them PLR, recovery graph, and calling Pareo, explaining that Pareo is a recovery function. That's where we are. But I still have this pending question about management plane versus control of plane. Is the management plane part of that or, or an example? Uh, uh, a very quick question. Georgios Papadopoulos from EMT Atlantic. The O in Pareo will continue being like overhearing or ordering? And did you discuss about this? I don't like understand. The O from Pareo. Yes. What does ordering. it stand for? Did you discuss whether it's going to be overhearing or ordering function? Uh, it's both actually, but uh, yeah, we, we kind of extend pre-off. So Pareo is supposed to take everything in pre-off. So the O from pre-off and then to have overhearing as an additional O, which is the one you see here. And the church agreed on adding an overhearing function. So I, I remember think... back in time that we had some debate or some discussion like a few years ago. In... Yeah, I think, I think we'll have to end up when we're getting to the framework to have that discussion. Okay. Uh, Do uh, I think... it's, Paro is a, at, at the architectural level, a new protection function to be defined that's tailored to the, the wireless environment. But I think I remember the discussions and I think that one is settled. The discussion was more of a layer and you mm -hmm. and, and Janos kind of started that discussion we clarified that we are layer three. <clears throat> so, so we might leverage the overhearing, but not by doing it ourselves, because that's another layer. So what we do is we kind of talk layer to layer down, asking, hey, if you can do overhearing, please do it for us. And it's going to be the lower layer, which will do its best effort to, to provide the overhearing. But I think the, the, the discussion at the time was it we made it look in the text, I made it look in the text, that as if overhearing was a function that is part of what we are doing. No, we are just controlling it, asking the lower layer to do something for us, but we are certainly not overhearing anything at layer three. But th there's no reason why we can't use overhearing. Overhearing exists in multiple technologies, wired even, and uh, if that is something that we want to define as part of that function, that protection function, it's legitimate. Right, it was more, more a matter of presenting it clearly as not a function of this layer, but a service exactly. from a lower layer. Exactly, because it's a lower layer, that's why I wanted to insist to make yeah. sure. But it, 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 there are multiple technologies that allow us to overhear, and if we want a protection function that takes advantage of it, that's great. Cheers. And stop. Okay, so next up we had... Uh, uh, Lucas, can you remove yourself? Well, you actually had me. <laughs> um, uh, we have so, two more minutes, right? Yeah, we have two more minutes. So the... Um, I sent this to the list. I don't know if you had a chance to, to look at it. But in, the in that side discussion, we brought up a couple of other terms that exist. So there's um, a recovery domain, sometimes called a protection domain, which is the set, the area over which um, protection occurs or recovery. By the way, recovery is just a generic term in the, the documents that, that disambiguate, uh, sorry, includes both protection where you pre-establish a backup data path or uh, something that can be used to restore service and uh, repair where you do it after the fact that there's a failure. That's really the distinction and recovery is the superset. So we said that for a recovery domain or protection domain, those are good things to bring in to the document and to reference. We also talked about protection group or recovery group, which is the set of paths that are used to, to deliver um, uh, the, the protection service. The thing that was new is this track concept where it's not, a, it's not the set of paths, which are basically ordered links and nodes, but it's just the whole collection of all the nodes and links without ordering. So it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a different concept and that's why there's a new term that, uh, is being proposed here, either recovery graph or protection graph. Um, Exactly. I, there was another term we talked about that I liked a little bit better, but I can live with this one. I think we're in sync. There's nothing to add on my side. 
Uh, you have several more slides. Do you want to touch no, on any of those? No, I think, show me the last, but I think that's, that's I mean, in past my time, and I wanted to reach that point, so I'm happy. Okay. Uh, so I'm taking myself out of queue. You want me to uh, flip through? Is that what you said? No, no, no. All done. I'm, okay. I'm past my time. And, and All right. Well, thank you. Stay tuned for the update. Appreciate the work. Um, do you want to mention what the plan is for the doc event? Shepard. No, Shepard. Oh, well, um, in parallel. Oh. What's, what's, so what's next for this document? There are two things that are next. We've reached out to all of the contributors, and we still, of the seven or eight contributors, we are awaiting approval, uh, well, some um, acknowledgement of, about the IPR status. So we're waiting to hear about that. <clears throat> and... Um, um, additionally, as was indicated, <clears throat> we had a working group last call, which technically we said was going to end last Friday. But as you can see, there's just so much activity. Um, I think we should we need to set a date for a, a next uh, horizon for when we want to say it's really done with last call. And I, for that, I, I guess we would like to solicit input from those of you who are continuing to have the side meetings and the conversations to see what's reasonable. Can I make a request here as sort of outgoing RAW chair? This has had a lot of review within RAW, but we really need the wider audience within DebtNet to review the terminology to make sure it fits within the model that you guys have built around DebtNet. And this is the chance to make it align because this should align with the rest of DebtNet because from a technical perspective, it does. It's just if we can get the terminology right, we're there. So uh, at that usual call for please try and find some time to run an eye over this. But yeah, but I would suggest waiting for the next version. Oh yeah, the, when the next version. There's going to be yeah. radical change in the terminology. So yeah, when the next version hits the mailing list, please, please get, get your eyes on it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Kenji here uh, from China Mobile, and with uh, my uh, colleagues and the partners. Uh, from Huawei. Uh, this is regarding a uh, 5GS uh, theological data node, and then our contribution is around the, the young model extension uh, for these things. Okay, I'm going to the next one. Uh, the the structure of the oh okay, the structure the structure of the slide is uh, it's like this. The first I'll just give a brief uh, background and the motivations that help us to come up with these contributions. And then after that, I will go in just to give a brief uh, a summary of what have, had been done in Yokohama on these things. And then I will give some new contributions that will be put into uh, this uh, draft. And then uh, we give the definition and the extension for the young model and then uh, some future work. So this slide, it's just, you know, I don't know, well, there's some uh, recycled issue. Oh, OK, OK, yeah. Okay, so this is basically just the, the title is like a logical DevNet transit node. So this is like a, a, a 3GPP um, SA2 project. So make a 5GS as a DevNet node. So it look, look at that central box. It's just like a 5GS a, a system. And then toward the left side is the UE. Toward the right side is the UPF. And then you have uh, like the left side, you have the DSTT. is the device side uh, port. And then the NWTT is toward the, the right hand side of the UPF. So you consider that one as a back box or transparent box. And then with all the uh, functionalities or uh, intelligence within. So this is just to give you a uh, concept of okay, what it's like. But this one as a logical DNA node participating in the IP DNA domain, it will behave just like a, a, a DNA node. It can it can be like a UE itself be the receiver of the datagram, or the UE can also be a, a like, a, you know, can sending toward the left hand side. It's, that side is also a data system. So it can be like a receiver or it can be a router. Okay, next one. So this just to give you a concept. And the here is like, okay, if we zoom into the 5GS logical data node, it has a composite architecture. So it's not just a single data node. And then there, are, um, they, there can be multiple UPFs. The user plan functions is like a uh, router. 
So it can be more than one within a 5G S. And then the, the project from the SA2, 3GPP SA2 say, okay, if you have more than one UPF, and then you may have more than one DANET node. And then each one will be identified by the corresponding UPF node ID. Here for this particular example, it's kind of crowded, but here we have only two UP, we have two UPFs. So that means we have two 5GS DANET node. So, okay. So just uh, you look at the box and look at, okay, this is the composite architecture. This is the background that uh, motivates uh, motivate us to do something. And that will be in the next slide. The next slide uh, has been presented in Yokohama because the, in the 5GS, it asks for two-way uh, communication. One thing is for the 5GS, uh, so that logical data I know to report the information like uh, resources, capabilities, and adjacency toward a data controller. Well, if you look at that gray uh, picture, toward the top right corner, there is a data controller. On the way, uh, on, the, on, the other, on the other direction, and then the, uh, the data net, the, the 5GS hope to get some information, like provisioning things from the data net controller that will be uh, controlled by the uh, IP data net domain. So it's like a two-way communication. So the thing, one uh, requirement uh, here is like uh, from the 5GS, there, there were two layer that one uh, was sent from 5G, uh, from 3GPP to IETF in last November to ask for something like basically 5GS want to get a logical node provisioning, like uh, uh, max latency within the node, composite node, max loss within the composite node. And then the layer them back from IETF to 3GPP acknowledge this is a problem, but there, at that moment, there was no work uh, that has been uh, identified to tackle on this. But fortunately, later we found uh, there's a one, uh, uh, one draft called uh, DANET, uh, ITF DANET Topology Young, and from that one actually is going to help. So in, uh, Yokohama, in Yokohama, we asked, and then later it got successfully reactivated. Yes, this is being done in Yokohama, but along the, uh, can you go to the next one? Yeah, along the line, and then when we try to continue refine the work, and then we say, okay, actually there are more requirements in the 5GS as the logical data node. So basically, this time we contribute by enhancing data young configuration. One thing is the data node type. It's called like a, this is like a component node type, and then we want to generalize. Say, okay, we want to define something to make it more generalized. So this time it can be like three GPP defined five GS, and then later maybe have something else. That's the first bullet. This, oh, I think there's a typo here. The the second bullet actually is only uh, the cutoff at the component node ID. The HTTPS it just uh, you know it's a typo there. And then the component node ID. Remember, I showed a five GS can be a component. And depend, depending on the number of UPF, it, it can have more than one data node within it. So here, we, we try to define a high level composite node ID such that it can accommodate more substructure ID. It's like a, a hierarchical ID definition, a new parameter. And then the other one is uplink and downlink. Actually, well, here I do not, I will do not want to expand. But this, for 5G app, it has the concept of uplink and the downlink. But with the, remember the DSTT on the left side port, and with the, some tunnel called video session, and then toward the right side is the NW uh, port. So that one is like it can go uplink and can, can uplink direction or can go downlink direction. So that is also thing we want to identify or differentiate. So three bullets we uh, can you go to the next one. We define in this ID. Here we uh, actually about to use uh, RFC uh, 8340. So here we reference data things and define the, the, this uh, young model definition. Okay, well, we're going to continue refining it. It's just uh, like a preliminary uh, definition uh, at this time. Okay, the last, uh, the last, next one will be the last one. Here, just say, okay, this is the, the work. The next step will be, you know, there are more. Uh, in this area, because the, the 5GS of the logical data not, not node is also um, an evolving project. So yeah, so this is the, the things. 
Yeah, that's why I intre uh, I try to get a, sl a slot here because this is regarding 5G mobile wireless and the DNS plus yeah, that's why I get this one here. Thank you. And uh, by the way, my uh, uh, partner Chiu is also here. He can answer the young question. <laughs> Uh, hi, Dan Bogdanovich. Can you please go back to the architecture slide where you are showing the uh, 5GS node? Yeah, this is fine. That's fine. It just shows here the architecture. So you are saying that you're treating the whole 5G network as a single DetNet node. Where you are... Yes. 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 Yeah. So in real life, you will have a single UPF co connected to multiple RANs, and each RAN will have different uh, characteristics depending on the local sites. So you cannot treat the whole 5GS as you depicted here as a single DetNet node. You would have, you can have a single UPF with two or more RANs that will have different characteristics. Yeah, th th that's okay, but that is given. Three GPP SA2 project is 100% done already. It's in the 5G spec it's a but standardized right here one for the whole thing i can have five rands with one UPS. No, no, exactly but the thing is in that case okay can you go to uh maybe the second second picture uh, go uh, now this one the next one yes here they look at the the grid the bridge one things you have actually the ue1 and ue2 they can be on the different tracking area of cell set but they can all anchor at the same UPF. In that case, it's the same dead net node. The, the gray one, the, the, the bottom part. So you have the, the two UEs. They can, they can go through different RAN, different tracking area, but anchored at the same UPF B. In that case, it's the same, UP, same dead net node. It's standardized already. Here, I try to, you know, when from the IETF side, we consider this like a composite black box. Okay, so you're saying I have end station, end station. But you are terminating it, a single UE to do two different UPFs. What I'm saying that you can have a single UPF. Look at the down here. Okay. Yeah, here, the, the UPF B. And have UE1 and UE2 both anchor. Uh, hi, this is Xiu Song. Uh, as the caller, I want to uh, <clears throat> give some uh, additional information about the Young Model extension uh, because uh, because TNZ has bring some information or requirement from the 3GPP side. So we think there will be some new attributes uh, should be extended in the existing ITF Young Model. And now what we are doing is just to uh, try to reuse the, the existing young model that has already been defined, for example, in uh, IETF uh, topology young. And another, uh, another option is that, um, uh, another uh, thing is that if we cannot find the proper attribute that has already been defined, we will try to define something new. For example, the, the 5G system uh, composite node type and uh, uh, 5G uh, system direction. Uh, the case is that uh, we are hesitating whether we ex uh, just uh, extending the uh, existing uh, IETF topology young, or we, we are supposed to, uh, you know, have a, for example, a container of DenNet uh, young model and then do the work in the DenNet young model. So uh, we are still, uh, just as TNZ has mentioned, this part of work is still uh, a very, you know, very early stage. So we will keep doing on this. Thank you, Shuston. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. So we're gonna move on to Quan. It's actually the last presenter of the day. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you, and I've also passed you the controls, so you should be able to advance slides as you see fit. Okay, I see it. Thank you. Uh, this is John Shun from ZT. Uh, this is about the uh, traffic, uh, traffic engineering extensions for enhanced DevNet. 
So first, um, as discussed in the scaling requirements, uh, we can see there are uh, different levels of applications uh, where coexist and uh, will be transported in scaling network. And uh, the services demand different levels of SOAs guarantees. As the figure shows, uh, we uh, summarized uh, some uh, uh, SOA uh, parameters for different applications. For example, the uh, cloud based. Uh, um, applications and remote control will uh, demand uh, the uh, strict delay of jitter and their uh, high the reliability. And for the smart grid, it will demand ultra low latency and ultra low uh, jitter. And uh, for industrial internet, it, it will de demand uh, low latency and low jitter and uh, high reliability and high bandwidth. And uh, for consumer entertainment, it will demand high bandwidth and uh, low latency. And uh, for these use cases, we also uh, dis uh, mentioned in, uh, yeah, yesterday uh, um, that and we will uh, contribute for the uh, use cases that uh, was not covered, covered in the, the use case draft. And so uh, we can see that uh, different applications will uh, demand their uh, diversified SOAs requirements. So their uh, differentiated queues may be classified uh, based on the applications in large scale networks. So as the figure show, uh, this is an example for uh, differentiated queues with four traffic classes over the surface uh, based on the SLAs, um, such as the bandwidth, delay, jitter, loss, reliability, and availability, and so on. Um, and uh, uh, each class can also be divided into several um, subclasses based on the requirements. Um, so, uh, for uh, and for the traffic engineering extensions, we uh, construct the uh, that led in uh, that led architecture in RC eight six five five. It is. It is uh, divided into service sub layer and forwarding sub view. And uh, for the traffic traffic engineering, the that LED can be built as a, a team mechanism to achieve the that LED queues. And uh, for the enhanced that LED, uh, we should support uh, the uh, differentiated that LED queues. And uh, we uh, we are now enhancing enhancing the uh, queuing based enhancement. So for the TE extensions, we uh, proposed that you provide uh, the um, um, policy, a uh, path steering, and resource uh, management to um, achieve the uh, differentiated queues of the um, uh, different levels of the services, and uh, uh, at the mean time uh, to at the same time to optimize the, uh, the resource re utilization. Uh, for example, for policy, uh, the routing policy, uh, including the banded latency constraint based uh, routing can be uh, considered. And for path uh, steering, the traffic scheduling should be considered. And uh, for resource management, the uh, time based resource of well control and forwarding should be considered. Um, and so, uh, and we also propose the layers model uh, to uh, guarantee the differentiated queues. It can be divided into uh, three uh, layers, uh, including the deterministic links, uh, the pathways, and the surface. Uh, the deterministic links uh, uh, provide the time based results and, uh, and uh, withdraw the uh, competition among different traffic. Uh, classes and provide uh, their uh, deterministic forwarding capabilities and the paths will provide their paths guaranteed by uh, time based results and uh, resolve the competition among different uh, paths within the same traffic class. And the deterministic service uh, will provide the service with time based results allocation on the uh, is a missed pass and the bridge of the uh, competition among different flows on the same path and to achieve the uh, differentiated queues. And uh, so for the deterministic link model, uh, it has provide it provide 
uh, one uh, dimensional uh, metric to guarantee their deterministic uh, learning capability. And uh, for the uh, deterministic link delay, that is, it is uh, the sum over the regulation delay, queuing delay, out output delay, link delay, of free, uh, free preparation delay, and the uh, it is uh, and the, the uh, dynamic load delay is the constant the processing delay. So uh, we can see that the end to end bandit latency uh, will depend on the sum of the deterministic link delay. So we uh, each uh, propose that the uh, deterministic link will uh, provide different level of uh, deterministic forwarding capabilities. And we propose the, the deterministic class type, and uh, it will gar be guaranteed by 10 based resources. For example, the uh, deterministic link, the, uh, the class one will uh, indicate it to the digital guarantee. For example, the uh, 10 uh, the microseconds. 20 microseconds and the, the uh, type well uh, is set to two it will be uh, delay guarantee and uh, set, uh, set to three it will be low delay and digital guarantee and this and this on and uh, we propose the 10 based resource container to uh, for the deterministic link to provide the 10 based resource and the capability uh, capabilities by resolving the resource conflicts between the different levels. And so it will uh, indicate the transmitting base per scheduling time slot and contains the uh, corresponding scheduling uh, resources. Um, and uh, uh, we also proposed that uh, the after traffic engineering extensions for uh, control plant uh, can uh, put uh, propose some uh, considerations and it uh, can uh, it must be uh, discussed in details for example the uh, uh, domestic latency resource arrangement uh, the resource collection the uh, distribute paths established in the domain paths established and the path computation with the uh, time based resource planning uh, configuration of of flow and mapping, so and, and there, there are many extensions for uh, control play. So last step, we uh, we uh, would like to seek uh, some feedback in a TISC working group, and uh, uh, what's your opinion about the, the traffic uh, engineering extensions for that lab? I think. Uh, thank you. We're actually a little over. So if you want to say a, something quick, uh, that's great, but we can't have a long discussion. I don't know if you want to say anything or not. We have two people in queue, but you got to be super quick. Uh, OK, I can make it super quick. It's just like uh, a lot of attributes and the model you have mentioned here is kind of similar as the, the IETF topology TE Young model. And that is, I think, what is also the, the topology Young model of uh, DataNet. Uh, the document trying to do so i think maybe uh we can make it work in the in the young model document uh just consider whether we need a separate document to to give some uh just this description thank you uh daniel Wang, uh, ZTE. Um, um, it seems to quite important to uh, to classify the sorry we don't have time. Keep going, please. Louder. Keep going. You're okay. good. Okay. Uh, ZTE. It seems important, quite important, to classify the determinants and requirements, uh, which might uh, correspond to uh, quite diversified uh, 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 .NET capabilities. Um, yeah, that's for thinking. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you all who have participated in this session, our two sessions. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all, whether you're coming here from, from DetNet or from RAW with an Alpha combined group. We look forward to seeing you all in Prague. And uh, thank you again, RAW chairs and uh, Ethan, secretary. And we're in. We're thank done. you all. That's it.